Hi everybody, it's Cindy the Scrapologist. Welcome back to my channel or if you are new here, please consider subscribing and hitting the like button so that um, YouTube knows to show my video to other people who might be interested. Thank you for that. So I just wanted to address a question that is seen very frequently in the Facebook groups, the junk journal groups, on my my webpage, um, etc. I see this question a lot and it is whether or not coffee stained paper is archival quality, if it's archival. Uh, this The very quick answer is no, it is not. Coffee and tea contain what is called tannic acid and any time there's the word acid you can know that it isn't going to be archival. Now if you are just making your your books um, or your ephemera for fun and you're not planning on having this last for a very very long time then it's really nothing to even worry about just go have fun making whatever you're going to make but if this is something that you're selling or you want to have it be a family heirloom that's going to last for generations then you do need to make your coffee and tea stained paper archival as well as any old book pages or very old ephemera that you're using in your journal because um, it can contain spores. And I have a separate video about that which I'll link below about um, what to look for if your old ephemera has spores or mold in it. That's a separate topic. But also if you don't dry your coffee and tea stained paper completely thoroughly, you could end up with mold or spores on your paper. So again, if you're just having fun, don't worry about any of this. It's nothing to stress out about. But I have a couple of options that I'd like to show you. Some people um, on YouTube, this is my chocolate lavender tea this morning, no chocolate cinnamon, it's very good. <laughs> um, some people claim that if you put a baking soda into your coffee or tea before you apply it to your papers that that negates the acid. Now that may be true but I don't think that anybody really knows that for certain. I don't think anybody's ever done a scientific study to know how much of the baking soda you need in order to neutralize that acid. I mean, if you know of somebody who knows this for sure, I would like to see it in the in the um, comments below. Uh, so there are people that claim that that neutralizes the, the tannic acid, and that may be true. So you can give that a try. Um, one quick and easy way is to use Tim Holtz or some kind of distress ink. Um, this is a dye ink so you don't necessarily have to use Tim Holtz but it does say here, I don't know if this is going to focus, right here it says acid free. So there you go, it's archival. If it says acid free then it is archival. This particular color is vintage photo. If you follow me you know that I have it right here and I use it for everything. I love the color of it and walnut is my other favorite for junk journals. And there are plenty of videos out there on how to use Distress Ink to make paper look aged, so I'm not going to go through that today, but um, this is an option. The second option, which is a little more complicated, is there is something called archival varnish. This particular one is matte because I don't want a gloss. It's a mineral spirit acrylic. It's an aerosol. It has a really nice spray. It sprays out in a wide area so just a couple of spritzes and this is archival. This is um, designed for fine arts but um, it says here it provides archival protection and it reduces light damage which we don't really care about um, for for our books but certainly for an antique or a, 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 an expensive painting that's going to hang on your wall maybe have light from a window that's kind of what this is for on the back you're not going to be able to see this I don't think I had to turn my focus off because it was going in and out but it you can use it on a wide variety of surfaces including acrylic oil watercolor and inkjet prints. Now that one's interesting because if you like to do digital kits and you want to be able to do something on top of the digital 
uh, print. Maybe you want to put some watercolor or do something wet on top of it. Maybe put some paint. You can spray this first and this is going to give it a finish. Now this particular one here, um, and I have the link below on where I got this. This particular one here is sprayed with the archival varnish and you can't even tell. It um, it's just you don't even know that it's on there it doesn't leave any kind of a film of course we like crinkly paper anyway um, the only drawback to this besides the the um, expense is um, it's not super expensive but you know it's gonna be it's gonna be an expense for you but it's really really smelly. It's got a really strong chemical smell. You have to do this outside. I'm lucky to have a, a porch, a closed-in porch, so I can do it on my porch. The paper, let me, this, I did this about two hours ago, and it has no smell. I left it outside for a couple of hours, and the smell is completely gone. It also masks over the coffee smell. If people, you know, who buy your journals don't like that smell, um, this is a good option. So this is that was just all I wanted to say today. There are a couple of options. If you do want to go archival, let me know if you have any other ideas for making archival quality books, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!